Hello again, I am Blunty, and for those of you who've been following along with my gaming PC build log videos, you may have noticed in the most recent one, where I installed my new SSD and mass storage hard drive, among other things, that tucked away in the machine already was another SSD, one I'd mentioned in videos before and on Twitter that I'd be getting in for review. Well, obviously I have it, and I've been testing it, and this is it. It's from EGET, E-A-GET. I'm not, just still not sure how to pronounce that. I'm going to go with Egot. It's the S600 120 gigabyte model, and it's made its way into my hands thanks to the people at geekbuying.com, one of those nifty sites full of gizmos and gadgets at kind of kick-ass prices. This SSD, for example, it's listing right now for 66 American smackers. Damn good value for 120 gigabytes worth of solid-state storage. So yeah, it's nice and cheap, sure, but is it any good? Let's find out. Let's check the spec sheet first. It's rated specs listed as weighing 40 grams. And because I'm not a drug dealer or a jeweler, I don't own any little fine value scale, so I can't really check that. But it sure is light, and I'll take their word on that one. The color is listed as black. So that's, um, well, that's, that's a lie, quite obviously, or perhaps just a typo. Either way, clearly what we have here is that kind of beige gold color that the marketers like to call champagne. But the important stats... <laughs> List out thusly. The rated read speed is 550 megabytes per second and write speed of 450 megabytes per second, which is dead smack in the most common middle value ground you'll find on most SSDs. Almost all of them read something about that. But the cold hard fact of the matter is those numbers are often, well, at best misleading, even for the best of manufacturers out there, which is why we benchmark. So, in the real world, it turns away like so. Now, if you're not quite nerdy enough to know what these four different test figures represent, it's up to you and your friend Google to clue you in a bit, but the dummy mode read is this. Bigger numbers are better numbers. So what we have revealed here is the real world read speed jumps a bit past 420 megabytes per second. The write speed, however, is much slower than spec'd. And I did run this test a dozen or so times under three different testing conditions just to make sure it wasn't some kind of anomaly. And each time it came up around these figures, regardless of if there were any other drives in the system, if it was a boot drive, if it was an empty drive, if it was running on a SATA port on its own, if it was joined by other drives, it always came up about these figures. So, to put this into perspective though, here's the same test results for a stock standard 5400 RPM mechanical hard drive. So, aside from the unexpectedly low write speed, we can see the big difference here is mainly in the random 4K tests, which again, for the uninitiated, is a good test representative of real-world usage access patterns while actually running programs and moving files around. The 4K tests are also the ones that reveal most about how much benefit you can get from booting and running your operating system from this drive. To show you this performance difference, here's a boot speed test. Both drives are booting up as the only drive in the system. Both have identical Windows installs and driver loadouts. Both are cold booted from a completely powered down system. And I didn't stop the timer until the Windows desktop was idle, meaning I waited for the loading animation swirly thingy at the mouse cursor to stop. And everything landed like this. The EGIT went from off to ready in just 27 seconds, while the mechanical SIGIT drive potted along for another 20 seconds further than that. Not too shabby at all from a bargain-priced SSD. In fact, the brand new super-fast HyperX SSD that everyone says is one of the fastest ones out in the world ever that I installed in my latest build log video boots in the exact same time. 27 seconds. However, under benchmarking, we can see that the pricier HyperX drive kind of... Well, it kind of nukes the EGIT from orbit, doesn't it? It's the only way to be sure. And just for good measure, here's the score for the 7200 RPM WD Black Terabyte mechanical drive. A look inside the EGIT reveals a surprisingly small PCB, which may be of interest to case modders out there, as you could conceivably whip this thing out of the stock case and mount it quite discreetly in a very small space indeed. Four memory chips join a Fizen PS3109S9 controller chipset, which, with a little googling, explains the slower than expected write speed, as this particular controller maxes out at 200 megabits per second write, not the 450 megabits per second. The controller does, though, properly support built-in static and dynamic wear leveling and power saving. So, while it is a fairly low-end controller chip, it is going to look after the memory chips properly for a good lifespan from your drive. So all in all, I'm calling the EGIT S600 good value. I'd probably recommend something a bit nippier and indeed a bit larger for a boot drive. But if you're after a bit of fast reading SSD storage space on the cheap, well, it's hard to fault it. 
Personally, I will be keeping this in my rig and using it as some scratch recording space for game capture and direct recording and such, as its 77 megabytes per second write speed, although slow for an SSD, sure, is still more than twice what I actually need for a nice clean bitrate for 1080p video capture. So I'll be recording to this drive live, then moving the large video files off to slower, louder mass storage mechanical drives for archiving and editing. 120 gigabytes is enough space for between 3 and 6 hours of 1080p H.264 video capture at the kinds of frame rates and bitrate settings that I usually use, so it should do really well for that. Though, if you're after more, there are also 240 and 480 gigabyte versions of this drive available from geekbuying.com. So the final word is this, it's not the most impressive SSD you can get nor should you expect it to be for these kind of prices, but it's still good value for money for those on a budget looking for the zippy upgrade to, or a partner with, a mechanical hard drive. Thanks for watching, I am Lunty, and I will catch you next time.